somebody who really works in the trenches of inbound marketing. I think after all the discussion we've had, you know, related to social media marketing, viral marketing, and all of these um, newer types of inbound marketing, it's really good to have somebody who actually works in the field to come to talk to us of how it is actually done in practice. Um, before I turn over the floor to Keith, I wanted to um, uh, say something about Twitter. The, uh, we'd like to continue our tradition from last time. Remember I was asking you to respond using the hashtag Marketing650 through Twitter. So today, during the presentation, if you have any questions for Keith you want him to address, please also use the hashtag and Twitter your, um, your uh, question. All right, sounds good? Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, again, my name's Keith Parnell. <clears throat> um, our company, Jace Group, is a local Norfolk advertising agency. Um, quite a few years ago, we started our small company as a software engineering company. We were a bunch of tech guys got together back in the 90s, a long time ago, and um, decided we form our little company. And then over the years, we've morphed, morphed into kind of what we're doing today. Um, a typical client for us um, is uh, an SMB on the upper end of the SMB scale. Um, and we go into their particular office in their industry and do set up, or of course, create marketing plans for those guys, set up their advertising campaigns, their marketing campaigns, um, measurement tools all the way through to the end. So, and we're gonna talk about all of this in detail in just a few minutes, but just as an overview, and set up the whole process for these guys so that they know exactly how much money they're spending on advertising, how much money they're spending on marketing, and can actually measure it down to the lead or down to the sale at the end of the process. So let me ask a couple questions first. Um, let me say this first. As we're walking through this whole process, I really don't want to stand up here and talk the whole time. So you guys speak up, tweet. I'll be able to check them over here. Um, speak up, talk, questions. If we want to talk about case studies, we can do that kind of thing. I'll stay here as long as you guys want to stay here and talk about stuff. So speak up. Don't just sit there and listen to me talk. Inbound marketing. How much of you guys do you guys know about inbound marketing or have been exposed to actual inbound marketing? Oh, that's good, actually. <laughs> Pretty good. Um, how many of you are out working in the advertising and marketing world at all right now? Awesome. What What do you do? And um, I came to the United States two years ago. Before that, I was a marketing manager for a bank banking company, mm -hmm. and I'm into public relations, direct marketing, print advertisements. And when I came here, you know, the, the labor market is very difficult, so I decided right. to launch a company on my, own, on my own, and I'm and I'm working on websites right now. I basically sell the websites here, and I outsource the labor right. to, to Bulgaria, because it's much cheaper to develop it over right. there. That's right. what I do right now. Very good. I do advertising sales with um, Pilot Media, with Jane Pilot. Very good. Cool. How far do you go in the process? In the, um, do you go all the way through setting up the campaigns, or...? Are you on the sales side? Meeting with the customer and getting the ideas together and right. then presenting them something, scheduling it, working with the designer to design it, and then following up with them on the implementation. Of right, it. right. Very so cool. I don't actually make the ad and put it online right. or anything, but right. following up with them as far as the results they saw in their campaign. Very cool. Good. Um, just to let you know, we work some with, we have a few contacts at Pilot. Of course, that's one of the mediums that we advertise in, uh, both online, pilotonline.com, and through their print advertising. Also, I'm actually gonna show a couple of examples. Um, I'm gonna pull these up first and show you, no I'm not, I'm gonna wait. Let's go through the process first. Um, inbound marketing. As we scan across and look across the scale here, you'll see several different types, several different technologies and several different ad mediums here. And you'll notice there's a mix of the online world and the offline world. Back in the day, a few years ago, um, a traditional advertising agency would set up billboard campaigns, outdoor board campaigns, um, print ads, which I'm going to show you here in a few minutes, newspaper ads, radio spots, those kind of things, and didn't really delve into the online world very much. 
Um, and then we had the whole web side, the web side of the business that actually came into the business world um, in the mid to late 90s. And there really was no mix between those two worlds. It was those web guys sitting over there and then there were these advertising agencies sitting over here. Well, companies like us started seeing, having conversations with our clients on costs and budgets and how do I figure my return on the dollars if I'm, I'm spending if I have to go over here and talk to a web shop to get this part done and then I have to go over here and talk to my advertising agency and get this part done. Um, you know, all the way through from your marketing strategies all the way through getting your work done on your web. So as we talk more and more to those types of clients and, and having the expertise on the online side and the offline side, we started mixing those worlds together. And there really wasn't a term for it back then, even running through the mid 2000s, um, inbound marketing, the term inbound marketing really wasn't around then. And then I guess probably, I don't know, 2008, 2009, the term inbound marketing came up. And it was even then it was all about the internet. It was all about building a website and having a blog and having everything you do on the web pointing to your website and your blog. You work on Facebook, kind of was Facebook was still early doing banner ads back then pop-up ads those irritating pop-up ads on the internet all of those pointed back to information on our website and our blog and it made it much easier to measure results on the internet because you can measure click-throughs you could go from your ad campaigns and measure clicks to your websites or landing pages we're going to talk about those in a few minutes. And we can figure out what's working, what's not. We spent all this money with pilotonline.com with these banner ads, but we're getting no click-throughs to our website. Well, we can measure that. Or we're really getting a whole lot of results with these types of banner ads, so we want to spend more money there because we're making money off of our advertising. Well, think radio advertising or billboards on the interstate. You really couldn't tell if they were... You, there was no way to measure the results off of those and you really couldn't tell if that ad spending was efficient or not. We just knew that our creative director said, yes, that's a good idea and it's a beautiful billboard and we gotta have it out there. That's all we knew. So the new concept of inbound marketing, new as in just a couple of years ago, our new concept of inbound marketing now mixes the online world with, I'm pointing the wrong way, the online world with the offline world. And we can still point our offline advertising to our website and our blog. And we're going to talk about specific landing pages here in a second. Actually, this would be a good time to pull these out. These are some print ads that we actually did for one of our clients. Um, I'm going to use this example quite a bit. Dragus Builders, Dragus Homes is one of our clients. Um, we do all their advertising campaigns. We come up with, you know, from beginning to end, um, all these pieces you're going to see here. So. This is a great example of how we're mixing offline advertising, traditional advertising print with the online world so that we can actually measure results off of traditional advertising. Typical ad, typical direct mailer. Sometimes we get these in the mail, throw them away, don't do much with them. But if you're in the market for a home, these kind of things catch your eye. So anytime we do any kind of ad, there's a term called CTAs, call to actions. So anytime you do an ad, there's a call to action on the ad. Anytime you do anything specific on your website, there's a call to action on the website. Now in today's inbound marketing world, landing pages, these special URLs right here, actually I'm gonna pass this around. These special URLs point to landing pages on our websites. And the way that we measure the success of these advertising campaigns is we're counting hits on these landing pages and then we're counting leads that are actually generated off of those, those landing page websites. And I'm walking through this real fast because I'm gonna show you the examples here in a second. Here's another one that we did for them. And I'm showing you this one because I'm gonna show you two different types. Advertising campaigns to their core are types of concepts. You come up with a concept like this one that's getting passed around now is all about Valentine's Day. It was a February ad, that was a concept. So you can have a concept, an advertising concept, but it get printed or advertised on the internet in many different mediums. So here's one, the same ads, direct mailer, home search ad, through pilot, same concept, but two different landing pages. 
So we can tell if this is successful or this is not, or this is successful or either way back and forth. We can tell by hits and by leads. So because of our inbound marketing tracking that we do, we can actually go all the way to the end of the process and tell how many homes are sold off of this one direct mailer right here. Wow, in our industry, that's a huge wow because we never could tell if it was actually efficient to spend $5,000 $5, a month on a billboard down the street. We do the same thing with billboards, landing page URLs. And landing page URLs, the one you saw right there was dragus.com slash hearts or something. What was that one? Listen, landing page URLs can be that way. Here's one right here on this direct mailer, fast-relief. And there's also a landing page right here that says my landlord is crazy.com. So they can be very easy to remember, very catchy. That type of URL we would use on a billboard because it's easy to remember. Or we put QR codes on low mount billboards, outdoor boards that can be scanned and go to landing pages also. So all of that was just to show you that this is how we mix traditional advertising and marketing with today's world of inbound marketing, advertising and marketing because we can measure results. Now, how do we get there? What type of work do we have to do to actually be sure that our website and our blog is gonna be efficient and people are gonna be able to find us, getting away from this kind of advertising now. Now we're talking more organic searching on the internet, using Google, using Bing, using Yahoo. How can we get to that point where our website is much more efficient and can actually stand on its own and its dedicated landing pages can support themselves and actually pay for our web work, pay for our, our, our web advertising. So these are the types of things that we do to make sure, can you guys see that? It might be hard, let me run through it real quick. Quality content, we're gonna come back to them. Quality content, inbound links, Social signals, which is a big one. We were just talking about that earlier. It's brand new. Social signals, search engine optimization, smart web development, and strategic landing pages. We just talked about those a second ago. Um, I'm going to show you a sec in a second an example of a landing page and how it actually looks different than a regular website page. There's no navigation. It's all about catching someone on that page and almost forcing them to fill out the form. That's their only action. That's their only call to action on that page because they're an attentive audience. They came there looking for that information also. So we want to make sure we get their information before they leave that page. So quality content. We have to make sure when we're building landing pages and we're building content for our website that there's tons and tons and tons of quality content. I don't know how much you guys have talked yet or are going to talk about um, developing marketing plans and doing research for marketing, marketing plans. A big piece of your marketing plan is your demographic studies and now social graphic studies. We're going to talk about that in a second. Social graphic versus demographic is offline versus online. So where are your people hanging out online and how do you identify them? <coughs> Excuse me. And doing keyword research in your marketing plan. That's how you develop quality content on your website and your different web pages on your website. You have to know who you're talking to, you have to know who your audience is, and you have to, to have your keyword research done so that search engines can actually find those pages on your website. You know, it's easy to say, if we're building a website for, let's, let's go back to a builder, Dragus, for those of you that don't know, Dragus is a builder of condominium communities, beautiful condominium communities. So we can guess off the top of our head, a searcher in Google to try to get to their homes could be searching for um, new homes in Western Branch. Um, they have a, a new community that's, that's going up over in Western Branch, Kings Point. Well, we don't actually know if folks are actually searching for that term on the internet or not. We think they are, maybe they are, maybe they're not. So there's tools that we have that we can go where we're tied into Google and tied into Microsoft's Ad Center, and we can tell what people are actually searching for on the internet, what zip code they live in, their demographic information, and that kind of thing. So we can tell, okay, folks aren't searching, folks in Chesapeake are not searching for new homes in Western Branch, but they are searching for new condominiums in Western Branch. So we know that we use those kind of terms on our website as opposed to other terms. 
So that's what we're talking about when we talk about quality content. Just throwing up a website, the days of throwing up a website and having our copywriter go off and write their own content, not looking at the research are done um, if, when we have to compete with other competitors in our vertical. So we have to make sure quality content is there. Another big um, criteria that Google, especially Google, looks at are inbound links coming into your website. We're going to talk about social bookmarking websites here in a second and links coming in from Facebook and Twitter and other blogs and other websites and that kind of thing into your website, your web entity. Google sees the more links that you have that are out on the internet that are pointing back to your website, the more important you are. There's been tons of terms for that back in the old days. SERPs is a big one. Um, I ah, can't think of others, but they're all, they're all going by the wayside. Now Google is just raw counting the number of links coming back to your website. So how do you do that? We're going to talk about, about it here in a few minutes, but it's submitting your content to social bookmarking websites. It's guest blogging. We just had a big um, uh, guest blogging initiative that start, kicked off over the weekend for our company on building links and that kind of thing. So this is one of the criteria that Google has put out in the last few months and said, you've got to have this. Your quality content's got to be up. Your inbound links have to be up. And this third one we'll get ready to talk about is social signals. Social signals is a big one that's just come out with the Google Panda algorithm change in October, I believe, is when the big change hit. And that's all about Google+, plus wanting content, sharing content on Facebook, on Facebook fan pages, business pages, sharing content on Twitter, sharing content on Pinterest, brand new and out that a lot of people are using now to share content, those links coming back to those websites, that's social signals. So before, Google and Microsoft didn't have the technology to go out and spider through Facebook and spider through Pinterest and spider through Google Plus and figure out how many links were actually coming back in to our websites and our content on our websites. Now they do. Now they have the ability to do that. And the more information that's shared, think, does everybody know what Pinterest is? It's a brand new community here pretty much. I see a lot of heads, not yes. Okay, so think Pinterest. The concept or the idea behind Pinterest is sharing cool information of any different topic. So just thinking about that at, you know, at 30,000 feet, if content's being shared, that means it's popular. That means it's good. It's not spammy. It's not stuff that's just going to piss people off. It's actually quality content on the internet. So now the technologies of Google and Microsoft have figured out a ways to go out and spider content and understand that social signals actually mean something. So now that content's being shared out there on Facebook and Twitter and, and, um, and Pinterest and Google+, especially Google+, because it's Google's, the higher your websites rank in the search engines, the higher they move up in the search engines. And these pieces right here are more technical. Search engine optimization. Search engine optimizations, as we knew it two months ago even, is almost non-existent anymore. Search engine optimization, setting your keywords right, um, information, information architecture, how your website's laid out technically, how your web team lays out your website and does its navigation walking through. It's important, but not as much credit is given to cert SEO by Google and Yahoo and Bing as it used to be. Now it's, it seems that it's a yes, no. You're either doing it right or you're doing it wrong. If you're doing it right, then we're going over here and we're checking this other information. And now you've, we figure out if you're important or not. Um, it's probably a good time to tell you a little bit about what we do with our company. One of the things that we do because we're a relatively small advertising agency is that we can, we can change directions quite a bit. Um, if things are working on the internet, we can change and go that way. If things are not working, we can change and go that way. As opposed to larger size companies, we don't have as many processes and folks in our, in, in our HR system that we have to worry about changing what they do on a daily Google basis. Google and Microsoft are not going to tell you exactly what they do every day and the changes that they make because if it's out on the internet, then somebody else can replicate it. Duh, not going to give their mojo away. So the way that we figure out these kind of things, aside from just what's coming out in the press, is trial and error. 
So with these testbed websites, we have figured out that SEO as it used to be is not there anymore. It's not, it's either that yes, no piece like I was, I was just saying a second ago. So a lot of companies that are just SEO shops or web teams that are SEO type people, they've had to change and morph to understand this kind of process right here so that they will still be relevant in Google and Microsoft and Yahoo. Smart web development kind of goes with what we were talking about here and a few minutes ago, laying out your website properly, um, doing little small things that you guys are probably not gonna have to do like, well, I'll give you the example how you know yes, no. When you surf to a website and there's an image and you hover over the image and a little bubble window pops up and it kind of describes what the image is, that's called an alt tag. Whether alt tags are actually there or not, that's how search engine spiders read what's in an image. They can't actually see an image that, because the search engine spider is just software. It's crawling through the website. So it can't read it. So we have to be smart. We have to tell it what the picture actually is. Same with flash movies. Um, there are tags in there that have to be placed. And then strategic landing pages, we touched on that a second ago, um, but I'm gonna save this here for, a sec in a, for later because we're gonna talk about that here again. Any questions? I know I'm kind of moving fast. There's a lot of information. So if you have any questions, speak up. Okay, how do we know what works and what doesn't work? There are many different ways we can monitor our brands, both on the internet and, off the, off, and offline. Um, one of the great ways to do brand monitoring on the internet is a tool that Google has called Alerts, alerts.google.com, Google Alerts. And you can go into the free tool, of course, <laughs> almost everything is free with Google, and go in and put in your, like our company name, we can go in and put Jace Group into Google Alerts and it'll tell us every time the term Jace Group pops up on the internet. So think about that with all, all of our clients. Every client would do this for. All these keywords like Dragus is one of the examples. We go in and put Dragus Homes. Dragus Homes, Chesapeake. And if it's negative, um, we figure out a way to handle it. You either jump into those forums and talk and straighten things out or take it offline and figure out what's going on. So brand monitoring is very important to figure out too what's working and how people are talking about you, whether they like what you're doing, they like your campaigns, that kind of thing. So analytics research, um, true analytics. How many times your website's hit? How many times your web pages are hit? Where they're coming from? Are they coming from Google or Yahoo or, or Bing? Are they coming from Facebook? Are they coming from Twitter or Google Plus or Interest? Where are folks coming from? And if they're coming from the search engines, what are they typing in the search engines to find you? Are they typing um, Dragus Homes? Are they typing um, new condominiums in Chesapeake? So again, if that's what people are typing to get to your website, we know we need to write more content or write more blog articles about um, those keywords and those keyword phrases to keep bringing that traffic back to our web entities. Now, we've talked about keywords here quite a bit. A number of, a standard number of keywords gets into the thousands on a good size business We produce website. a lot of content uh, on the internet, um, on our website and on our blogs and Facebook and all over the place to keep folks coming back to getting information and also to drive new traffic to our web entities. Um, so we get into the thousands on our keyword keywords. So when we're doing that research way back when, that's the type of volume you can expect in keywords. Um, because you want to make sure and get all those phrases that folks might be searching for out on the internet. You want to trap them into your website. ROI calculations. Um, we hit on that a second ago. A lead that comes through our system, we can now tell um, what the return is on this investment right here on this specific direct mailer. We can tell based on all the way at the end of the process, the lead, the hits, but the hits on the landing page and the leads that got, the marketing conversion rate leads that got converted and the sales leads that got converted. And we can apply those dollars back to these ad campaigns. So we can figure out what works and what doesn't work and apply our dollars appropriately. And that's re-engagement planning. Re-engagement planning was something that really, um, just a few years ago, before this type of inbound marketing came around, re-engagement planning in a typical advertising agency was like every six months or every 12 months because we couldn't tell what's working, what's not working. 
Maybe we ask somebody on the telephone when they call in, you know, to see about a new home or see to talk about one of our services. Um, you know, how did you find us? Or did you see our billboard or, or did you hear our radio spot or that kind of thing? So now re-engagement planning can almost be done monthly. Um, we can actually figure out um, what's working in a, in a shorter cycle, which is good because we didn't apply dollars where we want to apply the dollars to make them work.